Assalamu alaikum students here is Usama Tahir and you're watching learn english with Usama Tahir I hope you guys are fine and enjoying the video lectures and getting benefit by increasing your knowledge through my efforts Okay today we are going to discuss a very significant topic for the language students because for them the origin of language like i have already delivered or how language was started everything is important and even how language is learned is very much significant and important for them to study guys being a human we all speak languages we speak single language we are bilingual sometimes we are trilingual we are multilingual so do you have any idea how these languages are learned through human beings by how human beings used to learn them okay this is the question and a lot of study has been conducted on this field many researches were there still more and more researches are being conducted so that we can conclude this topic and we can invent a way uh, in the field of second language acquisition because if we get to know how the first language is acquired it would be beneficial in our learning of other second languages so this is the point there are multiple a uh, point of views about how language is learned by human being so today we are going to talk about language learning theories and the first theory we are going to deal with is cognitive theory by noam chomsky i will divide this lecture into three parts today i will discuss the cognitive theory then in the second lecture i will discuss another one and in the third i discuss the third one so one by one i will discuss language learning theories and uh, today we will talk about cognitive learning cognitive theory which was given by noam chomsky okay few questions in mind you should have few questions in mind before reading or studying these theories first question is do you think language is genetically transmitted from parents i mean the question means that do you think that language is gifted uh, through your genes which is uh, given from your parents do you think that like animals they have language in their genes they genetically learn the language they don't need to uh, learn the language they are, they have given the language in them uh, through genes i mean a cat has no idea how to meow he i mean uh, the cat knows it because uh, the cat has been gifted uh, with that do you think language is learned from cultural means to be acquired as a cultural aspect do you think language is learned through culture or do you think language acquisition is directly involved with the function of brain and mind do you think that brain and mind is important or do you think the social interaction or the cultural aspect is important in different theories we have different uh, viewpoints and different focus points so what is meant by language acquisition first we need to understand what is language acquisition then we will move back to our cognitive theory human acquisition of ability to use language rapidly by exploiting the words sounds phrases and grammatical nouns human acquisition of the language is the ability that enables you to use the words sounds phrases and grammatical nouns i mean in a language you have words phrases sounds but if you don't have the ability to use them to exploit them you haven't learned the language for example let's take the example of the young child of 2 or 3 months or so on he or she has no idea how to use those words grammatical nouns phrases structures morphology phonetics so he or she just doesn't to convey his or her message so the child is not child hasn't acquired the language yet so this is the example next is the capacity to successfully use language requires great command okay language acquisition means having great command over rules sounds like fa wa ta da these are the sounds and these are universal mostly universal sounds in all the languages with little little differences morphology how to form words structure how to make structures and extensive vocabulary thus it is said that you should have the extensive vocabulary knowledge of a language to speak it in my opinion i think vocabulary is a lot more important than anything else if you have vocabulary in a particular language you can speak that language at least you can make ungrammatical sentences at least you can make constructions whether they are wrong or not 
if you don't have extensive vocabulary how will you be able to make the construction if you only know the rules but not the vocabulary so vocabulary is very much important in language acquisition for example young children they have less vocabulary but they have vocabulary they have less rules but very less uh, rules as compared to vocabulary but they are able uh, to construct even the wrong constructions but they have the capacity to do that because they have the vocabulary they learn the vocabulary they imagine it they learn it from society and anything like that in their mind and they used to speak it so vocabulary is very much important so different point of view there are basically three point of view theories about language acquisition cognitive theory by noam chomsky which we will be discussing today social interactionist theory by lev vygotsky vygotsky sorry behaviorist theory by skinner so these two will be discussed in later on chapter in later on videos cognitive theory by noam chomsky given by noam chomsky in 1960s who was noam chomsky if you are a student of linguistics you will have the uh, overall view that he was a great linguist and you he had uh, done a lot of research in linguistics and very famous for giving uh, universal grammar and for giving a lot of other discoveries so it was given by noam chomsky in 1960s he has also given the language acquisition device which is the part of this video lecture as well followed mentalist approach okay this theory followed mentalist approach based upon cognitive learning the way by which we relate new things events or items of knowledge to concept already in mind this is the keyword here concept already in mind this theory believes that we have something in mind to which we relate new words objects and ideas new born baby according to this theory new born baby has something already in mind which is mentalist approach having something in mind to which you compare the new ideas i mean you have something some knowledge some basic knowledge in your mind and to this knowledge you are comparing new knowledge so according to this theory it's a tricky theory that you already have the basic notion or basic uh, concepts of the language to which you can relate new verbs and nouns and sentence structure etc don't worry i will explain it in detail then you will be able to understand the mentalist approach okay by mentalism we mean something related to mind and thought process okay and relating something to mind which has already existence in the mind and you're relating new concepts to it for example you have the general knowledge of what noun is like instinctive knowledge that noun is something which has existence which is a noun okay then someone teaches you that teacher is a noun and you will relate this new knowledge with the previous knowledge in your mind about the noun then this procedure will be called mentalism for example someone says you boy is the common noun and ahmed is the proper noun you have the knowledge in your mind that what is meant by common and what is meant by proper so you can relate this new information to the previously existed information or the knowledge so this theory rejects or somehow neglects social or behavior aspect of language and focuses on human mind and natural capacity of human mind to learn and acquire language okay this theory rejects that society is important or behavioral aspect that it is learned like other behaviors of life and focuses primarily on the human mind the human mind is, is responsible for learning the language and natural capacity of human mind to learn and acquire a language according to noam chomsky a child a newborn baby has the natural capacity natural ability to learn language so that's why he or she is able to learn this complex structures and vocabulary items and etc and etc because he or she has the natural ability natural mental ability in him to learn it first okay language acquisition is according to this theory few key points you should keep in mind for comparing this question language acquisition is an innate process is a natural process you it's a stress free process you don't need to be a consciously present it's just unconscious and stress free process by the child and this theory discusses lad language acquisition theory led to which language is learned we will discuss in detail what is language acquisition device so this theory just discusses that language acquisition through which language is learned 
This theory discusses the mental drama, universal drama in detail. Okay, these two basic points are discussed in this theory. Universal or mental grammar means okay. Now let's discuss what is mental grammar. Universal grammar or mental grammar means child is born with the natural ability to work out the underlying system to the jumble of sounds and words he hears. For example, if you say he had the breakfast, the young child will be automatically or naturally will be able to understand that you are talking about past. Who told him explicitly? No one did. Nobody, uh, you know, tells a child that this is the present tense, this is the past tense, this is the tense of present perfect that I have eaten the chicken, I have eaten the dinner. How a child uh, automatically starting start to use these tenses in past, future, and try to distinguish them very easily because a child has the universal grammar. Child has the natural tendency. To distinguish these things, to distinguish the grammar. So this natural tendency with respect to the grammar is called universal or the mental grammar. Or let's take another example for your ease. A child, a kid has the grammar in his mind. He has the mental grammar or he has the uh, grammar in his mind. So it makes him uh, possible for him to distinguish those complex structures and complex features of grammar. And natural tendency helps him to understand without even explicitly taught about these things. You don't teach a child the tenses. He or she learns it unconsciously, learns it in a stress-free process because of mental grammar, because of universal grammar. Chomsky says that language is so complex and this becomes possible for a child because of having innate ability to learn it or because of having mental grammar. Let's suppose. A language has, for example, English has 12 tenses, multiple and multiple structures, a lot of exceptions, a lot of tenses that this is this tense denotes regularity, this tense denotes something has happened, this tense denotes something has happened and still going on, this tense denotes something happened in the past and still going on, this tense tells you that something will happen in the future and will keep on. These complex features, how can a child of four or five years of age learns them. There must be some innate ability uh, related to it or there's something natural aspect attached to it. Your brain has been trained by God according to it that you will be able to learn them unconsciously. This is what Noam Chomsky says universal grammar or innate ability. Who told a child to use the tense that I was taking shower? He used it taking. Who told him? Has anybody told a child to use ing form when it is in the continuous form? Do you teach a child uh, to speak about past things using ed at the end of work? Do you tell them uh, like uh, explicitly? Do you tell them? No, you don't tell them. They just learn it by uh, mental grammar. This is what believed by Noam Chomsky. Language acquisition device. Now this is another important element that was discussed in the cognitive theory, language acquisition device. As it is clear with the, in the word device that there is a device that helps you to learn to acquire language. There is a device. And where is that device? This is the question. Okay. Special area of brain whose only function is to process language and is separate from any other mental capacity the child has. Language acquisition device is the part in the human brain that is primarily responsible for functioning the language or which is responsible for processing the language, for learning the language. I mean, in the brain we have multiple parts and every part is responsible for specific skills, for example, problem solving, for example, colors, for example, strategy making, for example, language learning. So there is a special area in your brain which is called LAD or language acquisition device that helps you to learn the language which is uh, quite similar to the innate ability that your mind has that element in it that helps you to understand the language naturally. So this is how it works. How uh, amazing is that that Noam Chomsky has declared there is a part in the human brain that is going to help you in learning the language and this 
part is separate from all the other parts of the brain and the function and responsibility of this part of the brain is also separate okay give you lad this is the picture the language acquisition device lad is postulated organ of the brain that is supposed to function as a cognitive device for learning symbolic language i mean learning the language here we have word form and sentence implementation in this part we implement the sentences or word forms learned this is noun this is where from you retrieve the noun this is from you retrieve the verb and this is from from color concepts are given so this is about the word formation this is about the color knowledge this part is responsible for the color knowledge it is written very small this is about the noun retrieval and this is about the verb retrieval from this part you retrieve, retrieve the words so human brain is designed according to, uh, according to the fact that it will support the language Universal grammar, we will explain it further. Universal grammar is a linguistic theory developed by Noam Chomsky, according to which all human languages. Okay, now universal. Now we are going to see the universal grammar in uh, another aspect that tells you that all human languages are constructed on the same abstract template. For example, in Urdu we have ism, in English we have noun. In Urdu we have fail, in English we have verb. I mean the basics of all the human languages are same. In Spanish you will have verb, in Spanish you will have noun, and in Spanish or Arabic you will have past tense and the future tense. Similarly English, similarly in Urdu. Like there is similarities, uh, the template on which this language is drawn is just the same without even a single difference. And that this explains why all normal speakers acquire their native language quickly and accurately and this helps them to understand because all the languages have uh, the similar setup which is universal grammar okay universality universality you can see all the languages have similar grammatical concept with slight there, there are slight differences in sentence structure that svo for english and urdu it is different in spanish it is different very slight difference you, so you will be able to learn them with less effort the set of rules that is thought to be able to describe all the languages. Noun will describe in all the languages. Word will be described in all the languages. Time concept will be there in all the languages. Common noun, proper noun will be there in all the languages. So, so on. So, this was all in this theory. And I have tried my best to uh, explain it in detail. If something is left or skipped or has not given proper importance, you can ask me in the comment section or you can suggest me to make another video about a certain concept you haven't understood. So I want you to be responsive. You need to be responsive because I'm working hard just for the betterment of the learning uh, for my students. So keep watching my videos. Thank you. Here is learning this to do Samatha. Stay blessed. Thanks a lot.